1938 saw many different comic books published in the United States that were one-shots and did not have a regular scheduled publication date. So we've grouped them together here in this video to showcase some of these unique books. Uncle Joe's Funnies, number one, 1938, published by Centaur Publications. This was a standard 10 cent, 68 page comic book with cover art by Bill Everett. Joe Hardy was the editor of Centaur Publications and he used the nickname Uncle Joe. This unique one shot consisted of games and puzzles and was named after him. Terry Gilkison contributed artwork to many of the games and puzzles in this issue. Kokomalt Big Book of Comics No. 1, 1938, published by Chesler Comics. This was a promotional comic, which is considered very scarce. The Gerber's Photo Journal gives it a rating of 8. He was an eclectic mix of everything from radio comedian Joe Penner, sharing the cover with six dwarfs, and inside we get everything from Little Nemo by Windsor McKay to the science fiction hero Dan Hastings, drawn by Fred Gardiner. Jack Cole art is also featured, as well as cover art by Charles Biro of Joe Penner. A glance at the back cover tells you the age of the comic. It shows Frank Leahy before he became coach at Notre Dame and Hall of Famer Alex Wojewicz before he even started playing pro football. The on-sale date of this book was about April 1938. The editor was Harry A. Chesler. Little Nemo appears in a one-page story written and drawn by Bob McKay under the alias Windsor McKay Jr. Insurance Ike is a one-page strip written and drawn by Jack Cole. It's a humor strip featuring the first appearance of Insurance Ike and would later be reprinted in Dynamic Comics No. 12 in 1944. Officer Skelly is a one-page strip written and drawn by Jack Cole featuring the first appearance of Officer Skelly with Joe Penner as a guest star. King Cole's Court is two pages, written by George Nagel, with art by Jack Cole. The Dan Hastings strip is four pages, titled Rad Omeron, The Martian Bandit. And it was written by Ken Fitch, with art by Fred Gardiner in this early science fiction comic strip. The Wild Cat is a six-page text story, written by Ken Fitch, with art by Fred Gardiner. And Paul Gustafson wrote and drew the one-page strip called Spots. Ferdinand the Bull from Walt Disney, 1938, published by Dell Comics. The first edition and printing is approximately nine and a quarter by seven and a quarter inches. It was a 10 cent one shot comic book and an early Disney spin off into the comic world. Nickel Comics, number one, 1938, published by Dell Comics. This is a pocket sized Dell Comics one shot measuring seven and a half by only five and a half inches, 64 pages with a soft cardboard cover. The book contains black and white comics such as Bobby and Chip by Otto Mesmer, creator of Felix the Cat, as well as Bob the Bugler, Wyoming Willie, Misadventure, and others. Plus, there's puzzles and stories. A small five cent nickel cover price. Most of the strips in this comics issue are from the British version of the Mickey Mouse Weekly Comic, which were renamed, except for Bobby Dazzler, which is an auto Mesmer strip and Skit and Scat which was written and drawn by Basil Reynolds. The Sign of the Tomahawk is the title of a five page Tim McCoy text story. John Hicks Scrapbook number one Strange as it seems likely published in 1938 by Eastern Color Comics. The format resembles Single Series which was a new series from United Features Comics. 68 pages and this is a single theme around Strange As It Seems, which appeared as a syndicated cartoon feature in 1928, becoming a familiar brand to millions around the globe for its comic strips, books, radio shows, and film shorts created by John Hicks. The next year, a second volume of the John Hicks scrapbook was released. Vix Comics, 1938, published by Eastern Color. 16 pages, no number, promotional comic featured Buck Rogers and other strips. There is also a 68-page promotional version of Vix Comics, also likely released in 1938 by Eastern Color. And there is a possible date of June 4th, 1938 as the release date, featuring Buck Rogers, Joe Palooka, and Napoleon as the main popular strips. The Adventures of Eva, Pora, and Ted was a no-numbered promo comic from July 1938, published by Evaporated Milk Association, a 16-page black and white comic with oddball dimension sizes of 4 and 7 eighths tall by 14 
but an 11 16 inches wide. This is a 1938 printing of a comic originally given away as a promotional copy in 1932. Eva Poor and Ted is the title of the featured strip, which ran for 12 pages, and every story ends on how evaporated milk is the answer to everything. Half the stories have footnotes referring to recipes printed on the back cover which use evaporated milk. Single series number one, 1938, published by United Feature Syndicate, featuring the captain and the kids as the single theme character of this issue, and this would become the first of 28 issues released over the next four years in this ongoing title. Single Series was only the second American comic book series ever published monthly that focused on a single theme, character, or title for each different issue. This was the first single theme title from United Features Comics. The Cats and Jammer Kids is an American comic strip created by the German immigrant Rudolf Dirks and drawn by Harold Nur for 37 years. He debuted December 12, 1897. After a series of legal battles in the 1910s, Dirks left the Hearst organization and began a new strip, first titled Hans and Fritz, and then The Captain and the Kids. He'd featured the same character seen in The Cats and Jammer Kids, which was continued by Harold Nur. Donald Duck, 1938, published by Whitman Comics. With a no number, this was a special one-shot Disney release featuring the first Donald Duck and Walt Disney comic book and was released in the same format as feature books. A 10 cent cover price and 84 pages, the editor at the time was Oscar Lebeck at Whitman. The comic was printed with a color cover but black and white interior with dimensions of 9 by 12 inches. Donald Duck is featured on the cover and there are many short Donald Duck stories within. Goofy and Pluto appear in some stories as well as Huey, Dewey and Louie. All the stories are written by Ted Osborne and all the art is by Al Taliaferro. And even one particular strip features the first appearances of Huey, Dewey, and Louie, reprinted from a Donald Duck Sunday strip dated October 17, 1937. Mammoth Comics number 1, 1938, published by Whitman Comics. This was a one-shot comic in a large format of 8.5 by 11.5 inches, containing many strips such as Alley Oop, Little Orphan Annie, Wash Tubs, Moon Mullins, Smiling Jack, Tailspin Tommy, Dan Dunn, Smokey Stover, and others. There's a promotional ad for Super Comics. Dick Tracy appears in a four-page strip written and drawn by Chester Gould. Terry and the Pirates is featured in four pages written and drawn by Milton Caniff. And Don Winslow appears in four pages written by Lieutenant Frank V. Martinek with art by Leon Baroth. And this issue features a promotional ad for Big Little Books. Smilin' Jack was a shoe store promotional giveaway in 1938 published by Western Comics. A promotional free comic 16 pages long, newsprint format. This one shot featured a story reprinted and copyright 1936, but it's believed this came out in 1938. The back cover includes drawings of Dick Tracy, Terry and the Pirates, Smile and Jack, Little Orphan Annie, and a shoe store name such as Weatherbird, Triangle, Kinney, or Pole Parrot. Different variations are known. The short 16-page comic featured a 14-page Smile and Jack comic strip written and drawn by Zach Mosley and is possibly reprinted from Super Comics from Whitman, dated 1936. The story starts on the inside front cover and ends on the inside back cover. And the strips are modified to fit this comic book format. Terry and the Pirates Promotional giveaway for Pole Parrot Shoes Likely dated 1938, published by KK Publications. There is a file copy of this book existing. Terry and the Pirates was an action-adventure comic strip created by cartoonist Milton Caniff. The daily strip began October 22, 1934. International Shoe Company made Red Goo Shoes, and in 1922, the company added Paul Parrot, named for Paul Parrot, who had a parrot in his shoe store. The Hannibal Misery Plant, that started in 1898 with a million pairs a year by 1908, made Paul Parrot and Star Shoes.